With us now, a father and son team in the new Congress. Congressman Ron Paul in the House, a new chairman, Senator Rand Paul, Tea Party favorite in the Senate. I want to ask you on this first day, there are some saying already they see signs of some retreat, that the pledge that the House Republicans ran on said we will cut at least $100 billion in the first year. Now we're hearing that number. Well, maybe that's hard. We'll be in the middle of the year. Maybe we should do 50 or 60 or 30 or 40. Is that a retreat in your in your? Well, I think it's facing up to reality. I mean, they don't have the votes, and they don't have the support. Uh, I predict the budget this year will be bigger than last year. I don't think the budgets are going to shrink uh, because just the cost of living increases and other things, there's so much momentum. I don't have high expectations that we're going to be cutting much of it. Well, if you don't have high expectations, you're going to be cutting much. What does it say about the credibility of the campaign platform you just ran on if the budget is going to be bigger? I'm a little more optimistic than that, actually. And I think, actually, we're introducing a bill that will be $500 billion in cuts. If you simply go back to 2008 levels, that's $100 billion dollars. We will push the leadership, House and Senate, to try to listen to the Tea Party. The Tea Party does want spending cuts. We do want to address the deficit. And I'm more optimistic. I think we will get some concessions. What do you base the optimism on in the sense that you'll be in the Senate, where the Democrats right. still have the majority. <laughs> right. If you're going to get those cuts, your dad's <laughs> right. chamber needs to lead. The House needs to lead. So if they're backing down already, that has to cause you concern. Well, for example, let's say the debt ceiling has come up. I think we should attach something to the debt ceiling, either spending cuts or a balanced budget rule. But we say we're not voting to raise the debt ceiling unless you attach spending cuts to the vote. But what is it going to say? As you know, you're assuming this power. It's an awesome responsibility. And in a new relationship, relationship with the American people, your first step sort of set the tone. The Democrats will say, aha, they're retreating, they're backing down already, they can't keep their promises. Yeah, I, I think the desire is there and they want to do it, but I think the momentum and the size of government is so big and so out of control that I'm afraid they can't get a handle on it. We will have more people supportive and they want to do it and they will try, but already you're seeing these cracks as I anticipated they would be, but it, it represents how huge the problem is. And uh, that's why uh, I think that the approach has to be more than just cutting here and there. I think we have to change our attitude about what the role of government ought to be. As long as we think we can police and run the world, as long as we think we can have endless welfare for everybody and nobody gets shortchanged, it won't work. What happens when you go home? You shock the establishment. You beat the Republican Party's establishment candidate in the primary with the support of the Tea Party. Grassroots people who are fed up at all the Republican spending. What happens when you go home and say, I'm sorry, I got there, I did my job, but the rest of the Republicans wouldn't help me? Well, I've told them throughout the whole campaign, everywhere I went, you're concerned about the debt. I'm not bringing you home any port barrel spending. I'm not bringing you a new shiny building for Louisville or Lexington. We're out of money. People understand that. I ran on that, and I will continue to fight for that. But I'm more optimistic as to what we can do. There's 87 new Republicans in the House, and I think they steadfastly got the message that we have to reduce spending. And I think they will transmit that message, and I hope they do, don't do cave in to the leadership who might want to compromise already. I think those 87 Republicans will have some influence. How much tension is there between the new breed coming in with this new grassroots support? And you've been here a while, and you've challenged the establishment while you've been here, but you know the folks who have been here a long time who say, oh, go slow, go easy. We've got a lot of people who would be mad at us if we do it so hard and so well, fast. I think we're going to have an easier time in the House. I think they will do much better than they ever did. It was when we had a Republican president sending the orders down to a Republican Congress, they did whatever the president told them. Now, when we're with a Democratic president, it's very healthy to have a Republican House, which we had a Republican Senate, then maybe we would have a much better better chance. But no, I think the, the House, uh, the people that are, have been in the House got the Tea Party message, and I think they're going to come in this direction. A big test is going to be on this raising the debt limit. That will right. tell us a lot about how steadfast they're going and to be. And if you want cuts to go along with raising the debt limit, let's be specific, people. What are we talking about? Because these are hard choices you have to make. You right. think the government is spending money it doesn't have. Are you talking about Pell Grants, reducing Pell Grants. You're talking about maybe limiting the amount of money that goes to medical research. What is it that has to be cut? But if you go to 2008 levels, that's $100 billion. Secretary across the board? Or across you... the board is your baseline. Huh. And then Secretary of Gates has talked about $100 billion from military spending. The Debt Commission talked about $100 billion. Absolutely, you're going to have to have a compromise. You'll have to cut money from the military as well as from the domestic budget. That's the compromise that has to happen. You have to look across the board for spending And if cuts. six or nine months the Republicans have not kept those promises, what should the American people think? They should kick them all out and send us all home. Well, I think they should kick the people out who voted incorrectly. <laughs> I mean, if, we, if we've been voting the right way, why would you get kicked out for that? No, you should kick out the people who vote for the spending. Let me ask you lastly about this. Father, son in Congress, is it strange? Is it odd? Is it fun? Is it all of the above? 
I think so. Very entertaining and also daunting. Well, you know, you know what I've told him is that uh, you know you take your opportunities in politics and you go after seat and when you have a chance you win it. I said he took an opportunity, won a Senate seat, and someday he just might make it to the House of Representatives. <laughs> <laughs> Do you compromise the dirty word? Well, you know, Henry Clay was a great compromiser from Kentucky, but some of the things he compromised on weren't that good. You know, he compromised on allowing slavery and the extension of slavery. So sometimes it's not wrong to com not right to compromise. I think you do stand for what you believe in, and people will respect you if you stand for what you believe in. I think we're at a, at a point in our country where the debt really threatens the foundation of our country. And the people who voted for me, I think, want me to come up here and, and stand up for cutting spending. Senator Rand Paul, Congressman Rand Paul, I appreciate your time on this big Thank day. You.